The game is quite simple, a variation of blind man's bluff. First, two kids are blindfolded. Then, colored pencils are scattered on the floor. Whoever finds the most is the winner. We're in a rebel-occupied neighborhood of Aleppo. It's full of orphanages and daycare centers. Some of these children have lost everything, while others just come to play. When they first come to us, they're in a terrible state emotionally. They won't participate in activities. They won't play. They feel abandoned and just keep to themselves. In time, as they start to play and interact, it gets better. They learn to talk with their peers and engage in discussion. Asma on the left is 10 years old. She's already wearing a headscarf. Boys and girls play separately. I come here because it's so much fun. I hope the kids' club never closes. Most of all, I love hearing stories. I always learn something new, and when I get home, I tell them all to my mother, and she gives me a little present. This boy's face is still covered in soot from a recent bomb attack. This is an ever-present reality in the lives of Aleppo's children. Parents, siblings, relatives and friends, injured or killed. Images sent by opposition activists in Aleppo. Aleppo's children have no chance of a happy life. Pre-teens love coloring books. Abdelaziz Alouche on the left is the director of the My Childhood Club. His goal is to provide the kids some space where they can try to forget about the war for a few hours. In rebel-held areas of Aleppo, going out to do some shopping can be deadly. Children are always at risk of getting caught in an attack. On the streets, one is always looking for signs of danger from above. The threat of planes and helicopters is always present. That's why the kids' club meets underground. Only here do they have a bit of protection. It's safer here underground. The problem is getting the kids home safely. That's really difficult. Parents don't want to let them come here at first, because the route is so dangerous. The kids club offers shelter, but there's no daylight. Here they play worry-free. For a while their fears disappear, and no one needs to dwell over whether it's safe or not. Our goal is to take the kids out of this never-ending circle of violence, away from the images of blood and mutilated bodies. We just want to provide them with a space where they can have fun. After four years of war, life inches forward underground. The children read a story about a boy who forgot his water bottle. It's a humanizing tale about sharing. Abdallah is nine and, like the others, hasn't been to school for a long time now. The explosions are the worst thing. When the bombs go off when we're playing, we always hide. I'd like to leave Aleppo and get away from the bombing, but if they stop, then I'd be happy to stay. The kids can't decide whether they'd want to flee Aleppo or stay. Adults are waging a war they can't understand. At least for a while, when they're down here, they can feel carefree, almost like normal children.